I recently came across something that made me feel a bit upset. I'll tell you folks, right now, I am in a state of mind where my brain is trying to rewire itself due to changes in habits, nutrition, cleansing, things of that nature. I've noticed my emotions are jumping all over the place. It's quite the roller coaster when you are adjusting, but the benefits are ultimately worth it. The reason I bring that up is because I've noticed my sensitivity is also changing. And just when I think nothing could make me more upset than what is happening in our world today, they are always able to somehow top themselves. Let me tell you what I'm talking about. Actually, let me show you. So I'll give two examples. So one is that uh, people eat too much meat, right? And if they were to cut down on their consumption of meat, then they would, uh, it would actually really help the planet. Uh, but people are not willing to give up meat. Yeah, you know, some people will be willing to, but other people, they may be willing to, but they sort of, they have a weakness of will. They say, wow, this, this steak is just too juicy. I can't do it. I, I'm one of those, by the way. So, you know, but so here's the thought. Right? So it turns out that we know a lot about, so there, we have these intolerance to, uh, so I, for example, I have milk intolerance. Um, uh, and there are some people are intolerant to crayfish. So possibly we can use hu human engineering to make it the case that we're intolerant to certain kinds of meat, to certain kinds of bovine, uh, bovine proteins. And there's actually analogs of this in life. There's this thing called the long star tick, where if it bites you, you will become allergic to meat. Uh, I can sort of describe the mechanism. So that's something that we can do through human engineering. We can kind of uh, ad possibly address really big world problems through human engineering. So this bioethics philosopher has already been in the news about this. In fact, I believe Tucker Carlson did a story featuring this scientist, Matthew Liao. And so the first thing that jumped into my head was, what about this tick he's talking about? Lone star ticks causing meat allergy in humans. Tick bites. Tick bites can cause all sorts of diseases from limes to Rocky Mountain spotted fever. But did you know that one type of tick can also cause food allergies? It might look harmless, but one bite from this little bug could change your whole life. If it attaches, the Lone Star Tick can trigger a severe allergic reaction to mammal meat, such as beef, pork, and lamb. Immunologists at Vanderbilt University School of Medicine, Dr. Robert Vallee, explains this is really the first example of a food allergy being driven by an exposure to something else like an insect bite. Did you hear what he said? The first example of a food allergy being a side effect of an insect bite. And what does that mean, by the way? Is this something the Lone Star Tick has always been able to do, or are we just finding this out now? I'll be honest, I've never heard of anyone developing allergies from an insect bite. With that said, I don't think I've ever heard of anyone being allergic to red meat. I mean, for a few people, if they're eating some low-quality corn-fed beef or a fast food burger that may cause some inflammation in an upset stomach so I wanted to know what the research says on this and this comes from the National Library of Medicine allergic reactions to red meat have historically been considered rare and described primarily in young atopic children it is now clear that red meat allergy is not uncommon in some parts of the world and other age groups Strikingly, the majority of these cases relate to specific IgE to galactose-1 
three galactose, alpha gal, in oligosaccharide of non-primate mammals. The mechanism of sensitization in this syndrome relates to bites of certain hard ticks and the clinical reactions often have a delay of three to six hours. An additional form of red meat allergy relates to inhalant sensitization to mammalian proteins. The best characterized example involves cat sensitized subjects with specific IgE to cat serum albumin who can react to ingested pork because of cross sensitization to pork serum albumin. So if you're allergic to cats and you're around cats a lot, it could cause you to have this cross sensitization, which will also make you allergic to things like pork. So there are three primary red meat allergies. A primary beef allergy, which is predominantly seen in young children with atopic dermatitis with milk allergies, which is common. Porked cat syndrome, uh, cat allergic subjects develop allergy to pork in some cases also extended to beef most commonly teenagers and young adults and then you have alpha gal syndrome which can develop across the lifespan including subjects with no history of traditional atopy symptom onset is often but not universally delayed by three to six hours products derived from mammals in addition to meat can elicit reactions in some patients dairy, gelatin, etc. So this guy is talking like Dr. Frankenstein. Dr. Frankenstein wanted to help people too. And he created a monster. And that is exactly what will be created when you keep screwing around with human engineering. This is not about whether you eat meat or not. This is all about taking control of you at a genetic level. They are using this meat climate change thing to rally support for such absurdity. You see, there is science, and then there is mad science. And here is the issue. And I'm going to let you guys know right now, if you think you have to volunteer for this human engineering, think again. Pioneering oral delivery for gene therapy. NGene has developed a proprietary non-viral gene delivery platform and gene pill technology to deliver orally administered gene therapies to mucosal tissues, creating new opportunities for treating hard-to-reach tissues across many indications. In the article, it quotes NGene co-founder Anthony Chung, We have built a robust non-viral gene delivery platform which can penetrate mucosal tissues and deliver a nucleic acid payload encoding a specific therapeutic protein and have developed a solid dosage form for oral delivery with our gene pill technology, said Anthony Chung, CTO and co-founder at NGene. To the best of our knowledge, this is the most advanced platform for oral delivery of gene therapies. So, you guys start eating some gene therapy laced crickets and the next thing you know, you can't go back to eating meat anymore. Well, mammals anyway, but it won't stop there. It will likely extend to all meat and then they will find a way to make you allergic to vegetation. Abergine, beetroot, cabbage, carrots, celery, cucumbers, garlic, lettuce, mushrooms, onions, peppers, sweet corn, potato, sometimes potato starch, which is used in pizza. These things already can cause allergic reactions in some people. They know this. So all they have to do is make it so that more people are more likely to have those reactions. And as I've just shown you, they have the technology to administer this human engineering gene therapy through the food. Watch what you eat, folks. And see, when people see bioethicists come on stage and say things like this, some people go, oh, well, he's a bioethicist, so he must be nothing wrong with it. 
if he says it's okay. <laughs> Next thing you know, there is this rise of children who can't drink cow's milk or goat's milk. That baby's going to be drinking almond milk for breakfast if they're not already allergic to nuts. I mean, they really don't like us, ladies and gentlemen. They really don't like us. And they are constantly attempting to poison us, right down to our genetics, passing that craziness on to our offspring. Speaking of which, I found this. Human genetic engineering is coming. We must discuss the social and political implications now. Now, this was put together by Samira Kiani, who is a professor of genetic engineering at the University of Pittsburgh. She states, in October 2018, I was invited to a secret meeting in Gangzhou, China. I was there because of my work as a genetic scientist who uses the CRISPR technology to cut and splice DNA an approach to genetic engineering that has come to the forefront over the past decade. I don't think it's an overstatement to say that CRISPR, a precise and efficient tool that allows us to edit genes, is on the verge of altering the course of human history to an extent far greater than the recent disruptions catalyzed by internet technology. If you think digital surveillance tools are frightening in the hands of autocracy, Consider the power to bend the human genome to one's will. CRISPR provides that power. To use another analogy, the ability to edit genes with surgical precision is a scientific discovery on par with nuclear fission. While there may be beneficial applications, it is by nature seductive to our darkest impulses. And in this article, you can go read the rest of it online if you like. In this article, she discusses Hei Jiankui and how in spite of ethics, he would create genetically modified children, Lula and Nana. Now, Hei Jiankui is also known as JK. And JK's colleagues did not call him out before the news leaked because what he was doing, while considered taboo by society at large, is seen as inevitably among CRISPR scientists. The fact that we edit human embryos at all should make it obvious that implanting those embryos is the anticipated next step. It is less scientific knowledge holding back the industry than social license and regulatory environment. JK attempted to edit the children so that they would be immune to HIV. I know, of all things, right? That doesn't even sound like the real reason. If this guy is smart enough to do this on his own, he certainly wouldn't be dumb enough to attempt such a thing. Oh yeah, I created these twins who should be immune to HIV. Go ahead, give it to them. And there you have it, folks. And just by reading through that article, you find that there is indeed a battle going on within the scientific community. There are power struggles, corruption. Everyone is in a race to the top to be the best, to be the first. That's all for now, folks. There is more to come. Please be sure to visit woodwardentertainment.com and the Woodward Entertainment Store. You can follow me on Instagram at J-A-E Woodward. Everyone have a great day. And as always, friends, stay awake, stay aware, stay safe. And I'll talk to you all soon.